In the late Triassic, dinosaurs were roaming about, taking some of their very first steps, yet they were by no means the deadliest or strongest around as they would one day be. That status went to the giant phytosaurs and pseudosuchians who ruled prehistoric Earth throughout those brutal times. However, one seemingly unremarkable dinosaur was still able to become exceedingly successful, the Coelophysis. When the Coelophysis was first discovered and described in the 1880s, it was clear that its success did not come from its size. It was a small bipedal theropod, with fossil remains suggesting that it was only around 1 meter or 3.3 feet tall at the hips, though it was still fairly long thanks to its lengthy neck and tail, which put larger specimens at around 3 meters or 9.8 feet long. But even with this deceptive length, the true stature of Coelophysis is best seen in its weight, as it was a very light dinosaur thanks to its thin and hollow bones, which were so hollow that its name actually translates to hollow form. Having said that, there was a weight range in this genus, as specimens have revealed the presence of both the robust version of this theropod and a gracile version, probably a result of the differences between males and females in size. The gracile forms weighed about 33 pounds, or 15 kilos, while the robust ones were around 55 pounds, or 25 kilos, making the Coelophysis similar in weight to an English bulldog. Having a smaller stature, the Coelophysis could not get by on brute force alone, and definitely was not the apex predator in its environment. Thus, it relied on other useful traits, one of which, ironically enough, largely came from its lack of size, and that was speed. However, its weight was not the sole contributor to its running abilities, as its lower legs were elongated and appeared to have had a good range of motion, enabling the Coelophysis to sprint with long strides, increasing its maximum speed. Together, its springy frame and legs allowed the Coelophysis to be one of the faster animals in the area, while also being more agile, a powerful combination. Yet so far, no detailed study has been conducted on just how fast it was, but many agree it was quick enough to not only evade larger and slower predators, but also easily run down prey while hunting. Though once it caught up to its victim, it did not catch it with its feet. For this task, it had another tool, its arms. The Coelophysis's forelimbs were nimble, flexible, and well adapted for grasping prey, using its hands to clutch the unfortunate victims, which were equipped with four digits, of which only three were functional. This grasping method is widely agreed upon by paleontologists and surely was very beneficial. But it had its limits, as the bone structure of the forelimbs indicated that they were weaker compared to the rest of the body, meaning it likely only hunted prey that was substantially smaller than itself, such as insects, lizard-like animals, and possibly fish that lived in shallow waters. The Coelophysis also sported big forward-facing eyes that were most similar to those of hawks and eagles, and would have given it the excellent vision needed for tracking and honing in on high-speed little prey and its teeth showed more evidence that it likely did not hunt larger animals, as though they were sharp, recurved, and serrated. The teeth were still noticeably short, with the larger ones only being about half an inch or 1.27 centimeters long, and with its skull also being rather narrow and weak. It would have been a very hard task for the Coelophysis to cause enough damage to bring down big and occasionally armored prey, though it did likely scavenge larger animals when given a chance. This being said, there are some paleontologists who do think that the Coelophysis actually did hunt more substantial food items, like Aedosaurs, claiming that the Coelophysis were pack hunters and would mob animals to death in great numbers. This idea stems from the multiple discoveries of many specimens being uncovered in a single area, with just one location in New Mexico holding over 1,000 Coelophysis specimens. This has made the idea of the Coelophysis hunting in giant herd-like packs quite popular, albeit there has been pushback back as some point out that even though they died together, there's no direct evidence that they had ever roamed together or interacted in some way that would suggest they were social animals. This group that dispels the pack idea offers the alternative explanation that the Coelophysis had all been in the same place at the same time because a large water or food source had drawn them in and that a flash flood had taken them out, as flash floods were in fact excessive during those times, particularly in the Coelophysis's habitat. Additionally, this counter-idea states that the environment in which Coelophysis resided experienced harsh conditions brought on by seasonal dry seasons, which would give animals even more reason to all be in one place that had a vital resource. And there has been some grim evidence that highlights the brutal times the Triassic could be, as the Coelophysis shows signs of being a cannibal. 
through the years, multiple specimens have been found with what appears to be consumed juveniles. And many times over, these juvenile remains were disproven to not have been of Pseudophysis origins. Until in 2009, when a specimen was found with teeth and jawbone pieces inside and around its mouth, which were identical to those of a juvenile Pseudophysis, once again raising beliefs that it was indeed a cannibal. Though who could blame it, as it had to utilize every tactic to survive and thrive in the ruthless world that existed over 200 million years ago. However, it wasn't bad all the time. Coelophysis lived in what is today the southwestern United States, as well as Zimbabwe and South Africa, a range permitted by the fact that during the late Triassic, the supercontinent Pangaea was still intact, and within all the places it resided. The most well-studied is Ghost Ranch, located within the Chinle Formation in New Mexico and Arizona. Like many parts of Pangaea, this area did experience arid conditions, but for much of the year it was made up of healthy floodplains that got quite wet during monsoon monsoons and contained a substantial amount of life. The Coelophysis probably coexisted with many more species across all of its habitats, but in this specific environment, other life on land included a number of Rhynchocephalia, Aedosaurs, Crocodilomorphs, Rausukians, Sulci mentisoria, insects, and small lizard-like reptiles. While in the waterways, Phytosaurs, amphibians, archosauriforms, and fish were plentiful. Furthermore, along with the fauna, flora was equally present, mostly consisting of conifers, horsetails, ferns, and cycads. There were also other dinosaurs in the area, yet they were very rare, as from the ghost ranch, only two have been discovered, Chindisaurus and Daemonosaurus. These dinosaurs would have been competitors of the Coelophysis. However, it does seem that it was still able to outcompete them, reflected by its larger numbers, which may have been a result of its physical traits, or maybe its growth rate, as studies on its remains found that to cope in such a hostile environment, where it wasn't the biggest, the Coelophysis grew exceptionally fast, especially during the first year of its life, potentially giving individuals a better chance of surviving when compared to other dinosaurs. Additionally, if it was in Indeed, a pack hunter, it could further explain the higher population numbers and seemingly better success rate overall, as the Coelophysis also had a more extensive range compared to the two other dinosaurs. The Coelophysis was no doubt a fascinating dinosaur. It was able to be rather successful during a time when dinosaurs were not yet the rulers and showed that even in the early days, they were a resourceful group. And thanks to its achievements, it has since become a Triassic icon, even being featured in popular shows like Walking with Dinosaurs and games like Jurassic World Evolution.